Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Boston Space Log season two. Here at work, just finishing up some stuff, so I figured I'd record some quick videos and uh, get a vlog done today. Check out this Galaxy S8 by Samsung. It is super, super impressive. I love the screen on this thing. And it's absolutely beautiful. Of course it doesn't do it justice on camera, but the way the video just pulls off the side of the screens and takes up your whole, uh, it's, just, it's really hard to explain, but it's really amazing. And go back to using my personal phone, and it literally feels like I'm using a bar of soap as a screen like it is such a game changer just picked up this new plant and I have no idea how to care for it I think I showed this in uh, season one but this is my wall of inspiration. I think I got a couple new things here. Um, check this out. One of my uh, friend's girlfriends has a connection to this astronaut, Stephen Bowen, here. And he wrote this really nice little paragraph here. Andrew, found your website. Good luck with your efforts. There is a lot of Boston in space. And his signature and the missions that he was on. So cool. Thank you so much for that. Mr. Bowen. This is amazing. This is a spyglass that I got from Champlain College when I graduated as the, the gift. It's really nice. Um, I accidentally broke it at one point. I didn't break it. Somebody broke it. But it doesn't actually function, but it's super cool. And I love how it just balances right in the middle there. Look at that. I got this. Um, as a certificate, um, basically of participation, I helped out at the Durham, New Hampshire Space Apps Challenge last weekend. Hey crew, it's April 29th, Saturday. I'm on my way up to Durham, New Hampshire to help my friend Callie out with the Space Apps Challenge. Sounds like SLS EM1 is most likely going to happen in 2019. There's a lot of articles about it, and it's it's pretty much confirmed at this point. There was suspicion that this would be the case over the last few months, but it's pretty much confirmed now, which kind of stinks. But I'm really interested to hear how it's going to move forward with whether or not it's going to be a manned launch or not. So that's going to be some interesting news as we progress towards the 2019 launch now. All right, I'm up here in Durham, New Hampshire um, at UNH. One of the labs here is where the Space Apps Challenge is being hosted. So far, it's going great. There's some teams coming up with some really good ideas. So what exactly is the Space Apps Challenge? Well, basically, it's an international competition put on by NASA where they post different challenges that they have in relation to Earth sciences, global warming, uh, really all, all sorts of different categories. The idea is to get engineers and really anybody involved to come together and try to find solutions for these problems. It's basically a tiered level where winners of each section move up and continue moving up.
Well, that's about it. Competition is over. The winner has been chosen. It was an excellent competition. The teams came up with some really good ideas. And uh, I'm looking forward to see how they move forward and how far they can go. So uh, my friend Callie was nice enough to give me this little certificate, which was very nice. Thank you, Callie. I have a signed picture here from Karen Nyberg. I left it in the sunlight, so it's really kind of fading, but I have another one at home uh, that isn't fading, so that's nice. I got some of my business cards here, a patch, and uh, a card from Michelle that runs Higher Orbits. From uh, I spoke at one of her events in Massachusetts about SLS and Orion, so she gave those to me as a gift. This is one of my YouTuber inspirations, Slogo Man. Me and him together at PAX East. I get a space pen, and I actually have a cool story about that. We can go in that, into that in a minute. These are three mission patches from launches I've seen in person. A EHF-3, GPS-2F-11, and the Orion EFT-1 launch. And I got this little uh, owl, owl dude in a rocket. I bought this at a uh, family event in Massachusetts where I was holding a table for space and then a couple booths over somebody was selling their artwork and this was one so I had, figured I had to pick it up. Okay yeah so this space pen this has a cool story behind it. Uh, a few years ago I was in Florida I was going to Orlando with my family to go to Disney World as a family trip and I realized that while I was down there there was going to be a launch at Cape Canaveral I had never seen a launch before. I was into space and sciences, but not as much as I am now. And really, this, this event was really the trigger that kind of escalated me to where I am now and got really into space after that. So, I didn't own this space bun before that happened, so I didn't have this. So when you stay at Disney and you use their transportation and everything, you don't have to worry about your suitcases coming off the airplane. They basically take them for you and they bring them to your hotel room and you don't see them again until you check in into your hotel room. It's pretty cool. So I did not own a space pen. But when I got to my hotel room and opened up my suitcase, I found a space pen in my luggage. And I didn't know what it was at first, so I just saw this in my luggage. I've heard about space pens before, but I never saw what they were or what they looked like. So I didn't realize what it was. Opened it up, realized it was a pen, and uh, I looked up the, you know, what it said on it. It says Space Pen, Fisher. Fisher's the company that makes these Space Pens. So I was like, this is really crazy. So I don't know what happened. Um, I assume maybe this fell out of somebody else's suitcase while it was at the airport or being transported by Disney. And they just shoved it, when they found it, they just shoved it into the closest bag that they could find, which was mine. So it was really cool to find this the night before going to see my first launch at Cape Canaveral. Um, the launch I was going down for was the AEHF-3 launch. It's this, it's this patch right here. So, yeah, so just due to the whole weird circumstance of finding this pen that night, I try to keep it safe and I really like it having it. So... I keep it on my wall of inspiration, and uh, I've almost lost it twice, and I've freaked out both times. Um, so I just keep it in one place now, and I don't ever move it around. So that's going back on the wall right now. But yeah, super cool. And after seeing that first launch, which I have a video of it right here. Super cool to see. It was an awesome launch. Great visual, great sound. You could feel the vibrations from the rocket. It was really great. Totally changed the course of my life from there on out. So big important important time in my life. And I guess the, the space pen really is kind of uh, a, an object that I can hold from that exact moment. Everything kind of changed, which was awesome. So I'm just looking for dinner now. Came in late to work tonight, so I'll be staying fairly late. In the meantime, let's talk about some SpaceX. You probably know if you watched my last vlog that SpaceX was supposed to SpaceX was supposed to launch the 
payload, classified payload for the National Reconnaissance Office on Sunday morning, but unfortunately there was an issue with the sensor, so it got uh, delayed until Monday morning. But the launch went successful on Monday morning, and SpaceX got some of the best footage from any launch to date. It was really, really awesome. Go check it out. I'll put a link to the, uh, the video down in the description. It was a picture-perfect launch and an absolutely picture-perfect landing. You gotta see the video, it's really awesome. It's really going to show that these things are becoming almost seemingly boring at this point because they keep happening so precisely and perfectly, at least the last few. So I know it's, it's too early to say that now, they've only had a, a few of these landings in total, but so far it's going really great. And in case you didn't know, SpaceX actually launched the first reused rocket on a mission a couple weeks ago. Something like that. So not only have they retrieved a booster from launch, they've cleaned it up, refurbished it, and used it a second time. Worked flawlessly, there was no issues at all, so it really is a proof of concept in that everything is working as they are planning, which is great. One of the bad parts about working in the financial district is all the food places close early except for Subway. Alright guys, now we have a new segment called... SpaceX Falcon 9. It's going to launch on May 15th. The window is from uh, 7.20 to 8.10 Eastern Time. This will likely not have a landing attempt. The payload on this was originally going to be launched on a Falcon Heavy. It needs a lot, as much power as it can get. So they're going to launch this on a Falcon 9. I don't think they're going to try to land it because they need all that fuel they can get to bring the payload to orbit. There's a funny story about this booster, this rocket. So there's people on the internet that are very much into uh, tracking SpaceX, following SpaceX, figuring out exactly what they do. They know the, the model numbers of every single Falcon 9 rocket and from when it's released from the factory to the tests. Um, if it's reused later, they track where each rocket goes using a serial number. This rocket that's being launched on the 15th is a part of a very funny video that's online. There was this guy that was advertising his hot dog and family business. Um, he was outside, out front of his business, and the Falcon 9 drives by in the back of the transporter, and he freaks out, and he's like, what the heck was that? Really funny. I linked the video below in the description. Check it out. This is that rocket that's launching. The payload is for a communication company in London called Inmarsat, if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, it's going to be the fourth uh, communication satellite in a one specific network. All right, my camera just died, so this is a video test of the Galaxy S8 by Samsung. I am not recording this in 4K. It has the ability to do it in 4K, but there's no way I'm editing and processing a video that's in 4K right now. Sorry about that, but here's going to be a good test. My camera's dead. That's going to be the end of the vlog for now. Thank you for watching. If you liked, please subscribe, and I look forward to the next video.